my last claw when a friendship was formed. My name is Flounder. Woohoo! And how music came alive. The Little Mermaid Ariel's Beginning. The Little Mermaid Ariel's Beginning or The Little Mermaid 3. This was released in 2008. And this was the final direct-to-video sequel released under Disney Toon. Uh, after that, uh, they just focused more primarily on spinoffs until the studio was shut down in, I think it was 2016, if I'm not mistaken. But this movie uh, is the third film in the Little Mermaid series, and this served as a prequel to the original line of i not liking the original little mermaid from 1989 uh this is one i had never seen before until covering this series is it any good is it any bad well i guess you'll have to find out so in the film uh we follow ariel's adventures before she gave up her fins for true love when ariel wasn't singing with her sister she spent time with her mother Queen Athena. Ariel is devastated when her mother is killed by pirates after King Triton outlaws all singing. Along with pals Flounder and Sebastian, Ariel sets off in hopes of changing her father's decision to ban music from the kingdom. So this is one that, this is a movie that kind of frustrated me when watching it because uh, this movie has great animation, like really good animation, better than expected in a direct-to-video film. But this movie was completely unnecessary. Like, did, did people want to see a prequel movie about what Ariel was doing before we see her in the original story, the main story, uh, where she longs to be human? No? I think you can say that with most of these direct video films, but this one just felt like they were desperate to try to do something else with this franchise. Uh, I think the only reason it was not scrapped was because I think the film was well in the production. This was after, you know, they had some management changes at Disney uh, when John Lasseter came on board and he shut down like most of the direct video sequels that were in development, but this one and Cinderella 3 stayed because they were already far in production. And they were like the last ones released. Uh, but this one was not that good. Uh, this was such a forgettable movie. Yeah, it's got good animation. Uh, it's good that Jodie Benson reprised her role as Ariel. Like she still commits to the character along with Samuel E. Wright as Sebastian. Uh, I think they made a couple of voice changes, uh, like Jim Cummings is now King Triton, because I think the original voice actor, I think he was ha he was in declining health at the time, so he couldn't reprise his role. But Jim Cummings was still a good substitute, and he's one of my favorite voice actors. Um, yeah, I think my big problem with this movie is, for a prequel film, it takes the most disposable story possible to make this happen. Like when reading the synopsis, you got a certain thing being banned, music in this case, and the main character working to reverse the ban. Where have I seen this plot before? Oh, they went footloose on us, but it's music instead of dancing. Like, really? That's where you're going with this? And also, the it's based on the whole reasoning for the ban was based on a tragic accident. Like, yeah, the synopsis said she was killed by pirates, but when you watch the film, they had no real intent to hunt down a mermaid. The whole death was just an accident, uh, which makes his reasoning for banning music all the more stupid. And so that's like a big issue I have with the plot. The biggest, like, what the heck? Like, why did they not? Like, the biggest, like, frustration about this whole movie is the villain. They have a really sucky villain in this movie. The character is named Marina Del Rey. She's voiced by Sharon Stone, of all people. 
and you watch this movie, and uh, she's this uh, character in the kingdom who wants to be the advisor to Triton, and she feels neglected, and she plots to take it over for herself. But the way the character acts and the way the character is almost designed, they did a big missed opportunity. They should have been, this should have been Ursula. Ursula should have been, we should have had a younger Ursula in this movie, seeing what she was like. Because, you know, if you remember in the first Little Mermaid, Ursula talked about how she used to live in the palace and then she tried to get into her own fins and, she and Triton clash and she got banished. They would have been more interesting to see that story instead of this cheap cardboard imitation of what I feel like should have been Ursula, but it's just a random throwaway character, which I feel like cheapens the lore of the story. I don't know why they did not make Ursula this character and not this random character who is like a really pale imitator of a classic Disney villain. And then for a movie that's dealing with music or the lack of music, the few songs we did get in this movie are so forgettable. Like this music, this movie does not work on a musical level at all. Uh, yeah. Jody Benson sings. There's one song she sings. Like she sings great on it, but the song just never stuck out to me. The one song that does stand out to me in this movie they decide to sing Jump in the Line is the main song in this movie. Yes, the classic reggae song from Harry Belafonte that was popularized in Beetlejuice. That's the main song they sing in this movie. That was a dumb decision. I don't know what they were thinking there. I love the song, but it does not work in this movie. Not at all. I will say, sadly, this is my second favorite film in the Little Mermaid franchise, though. Because I do think this movie is a little better than the live-action remake. Because at least this film has great animation. The visuals in the Little Mermaid remake sucked, especially underwater. And I would still watch this film over Little Mermaid 2, which had a more frustrating story. This movie is more forgettable than anything else. It has no real need to exist. But aside from some frustrations with some story as aspects, like, if you turn this movie on, it's a relatively harmless film. Same thing with the, re the Little Mermaid remake. I would say it's a harmless movie, but it just had no real need to exist. But I think Ariel's beginning is a step up from that because at least it has good animation in it. I didn't care for this movie. I'm glad I'm done with the directed video films because some of these were very frustrating to watch. And most of them were more dull and forgettable than anything else. And this one is no exception. But I'm glad that I'm out of this directed video sequel phase on celebrating Disney. So, at the end of the day, I'm only going to give The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning, uh, two and a half out of five stars.